Shalom Aleichem. Salam Aleichem. My blessings of peace to all of you. Thank you, Rabbi Sarna, for framing this evening and for inviting me to address this incredible audience in this historic, this historic evening. As the president of Yeshiva University, I am deeply proud of our tens of thousands of graduates who have left Yeshiva University to go and change the world. Two of them are rabbis in the UAE. It's my honor to acknowledge and offer words of deep appreciation for the incredible work of Rabbi Eli Abadi and, of course, our incredible Rabbi Yehuda Sarna. who has led by example and inspiration, not just the community here, but communities around the world who are watching and inspired by him. I'd like to thank our host, a man who I already have a deep affection for, Ahmed al-Mansouri, and his incredible, incredible vision. Long before the Abraham Accords, Ahmed has thought about brothers reuniting. And this museum is a tribute to his incredible vision. And all of us here tonight are deeply appreciative and inspired by it. You know, Yeshiva University is the flagship Jewish university in the world. As an institution, we are 125 years old. But we date ourselves as starting much earlier for an hour education, we're rooted in the Jewish values that were given by God to Moses at Sinai over 3,000 years ago. And one of our core beliefs is the power of individuals to move history forward. The power of individuals to move history forward. How fitting is it right now? A great reflection of the brotherhood that brings us together and unites us. Tonight's event, while bringing us back to this dark time of the Holocaust, is an evening of light because it shows us how we can come together in partnership of faith communities who will not rest until hate is defeated. We stand side by side with our new friends and allies in the battle against anti-Semitism and the fight for tolerance. Let me share with you a story that reflects this transition from darkness to light. Story is told of a Jewish grandfather who throughout World War II managed to keep his grandson alive even in the concentration camps. In the concentration camps, it was the most horrible and difficult of times. And the grandfather was able to smuggle his grandson and hand him food, keep him alive throughout these years. At the end of the war, the Nazis forced their Jewish prisoners on a death march. They forced them, without any food, without any rest, to walk for miles and miles. Jews were dropping and dying of dehydration and exhaustion. And anyone who slipped was immediately shot. The grandfather realized that his grandson would never be able to survive. So he put his grandson on his shoulders, and he began to walk and carry him. All of the prisoners told the grandfather, you're never going to make it. You have to leave him behind. You're never going to survive. You're both are going to die. But the grandfather wouldn't listen. And he continued to march with his grandson on his shoulders. At the end of the march, the Allied forces came and liberated the prisoners. And to everyone's amazement, the grandfather and the grandson survived. 
When people came to him and said, how did you do it? How do you perform such a miraculous act of strength? The grandfather quoted a passage in the Talmud, in the Gemara. Ha'aron no say et no sab. The Ark of the Covenant carries its carriers. Now when the rabbis told us this in the Talmud, what they meant is that when the Jews crossed the desert from Egypt to the Promised Land to Israel, they were carrying the Ark. And it looked like that they were the ones holding on to the Ark, but in fact the Ark miraculously lifted them. And it was the Ark that was carrying them. Ha'aron no seyat no sav. But when the grandfather said it, he meant something totally differently. You think I was carrying my grandson? It was he who gave me purpose. It was he who gave me meaning. You think that I was holding his weight? Without him, I never would have survived. He gave me my purpose. It was he who was carrying me. It is this story that I think characterizes the Jewish community and typifies the history of the Jewish people. For thousands of years, our people have faced hardships and even at times persecutions. But we as a people have constantly and consistently defied the odds. We have marched through a difficult and often tragic history, surviving when others have fallen into the dustbin of history. For our essential belief in God and in the future has given us the strength to persevere. Our Jewish community is the product of generations of parents and grandparents who have borne their children on their shoulders through times of prosperity and periods of darkness. And the Holocaust is a primary example of after having suffered so much pain and loss, the Jewish people were able to rebuild our lives with flourishing Jewish communities throughout the world and of course, the modern state of Israel. But today's times and tonight's event reflect the fact that we live in a different world with different opportunities. We live in an unprecedented era, an interconnected era, in which advances in technology and global communications have given us new opportunities to impact one another, in which the relationship between Jews and others in the world has shifted where once we might have looked at our neighbors and saw only persecutors, today we may look at them and see potential partners, even brothers. Whereas in the past we marched through the valley of the shadow of death alone, with the highest goal being survival, today we're on a different march. And this is a march not just for the survival of Jewish children, but for peace and prosperity for all children. And in this march, we are no longer alone. We do not need to bear the full weight of our grandchildren and the arc of our future, for there are others with us who are partners on this journey. And this is the spirit of this historic event tonight. There's a moment of time today in which especially we, the leaders of different faith communities, are coming together in the spirit of God and our common humanity to march together, to march forward in history. And this is particularly fitting for the B'nai Abraham, the children of Abraham. You come to this evening, you visit this museum, and you feel a historic reunion between Ishmael and Yitzchak. You feel a reuniting, a return of cousins, of brothers, to work together to build a better future for our families. Not only in mutual support against hate and intolerance, but also positive collaborative initiatives in advancing human flourishing through technology, entrepreneurship, innovation, and business. And we at Yeshiva University are excited to explore ways in which we can partner and connect in building a brighter future together. And I pray that as we come together in times of mourning and loss, 
as in Holocaust Memorial Day, so too we will come together in joy and happiness, celebrating each other's mutual successes. May that day come soon, and may God bless you all.